I'm a survivor. You are too. But you have to think in terms of that. What I will tell you will help you with that. Some of you are well beyond where I am, and I apologize if this sounds very fundamental to you, but there are lessons that I've learned, as you can see, the hard way. And, you know, that little fiasco was six figures in climbing, okay? Low six, but it's still six figures, plus unbelievably disruption, disruptive to processes and doing things. I couldn't get coordination with the insurance carriers initially. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you're a savvy business owner, you're going to want to do a couple of things. First is, I think it's probably obvious, is check your BOP policy to see what your coverage is for papers, for data. They actually call it data. And you may, you may think of data as that which resides in your PC. Well, guess what, folks? You just saw part of 14 filing cabinets and boxes, you got just some of them. You didn't see all the boxes, you saw some of them. That's data. And you can get help to get recovery on that. But you've got to make sure you've got a high limit on the data. My data alone was close to 70,000 cost to have remedied what you see there. It doesn't look like it would cost that much money, but it certainly does. Now, the other people who like this will be people in Laserfish Cloud for a bunch of economic reasons, not dealing with the, the, the flood per se. It deals with the fact that if you're an IRA or an RIA, IARR, there's responsibilities that you have, and one of them is a business continuity plan. If you don't have your data and your information, that would be the beginning, I would think, of a continuity plan. So moving forward, from Stephen Foster Company, I bought a bunch of stickers that said 30th year anniversary, April 4, 2016. We're already using them. <laughs> the challenge with the records and document management was really simple. There was no path. I had to cut the trees and follow through and get the rocks out of the way. This wasn't something that I could plan. Usually you plan a vacation. You plan what you're going to do. You plan to buy a car. You plan to get married. You plan to have a baby. You don't plan to have a flood. But you need to react to it and quickly. I didn't have time to learn about all the wonderful things that Laserfish had then. So I designed some things that made it work. None of which would have happened without the help of the man in the front row, the Air Master, who's my very valuable added reseller <laughs> from Accelerate Information Systems. He's at least two and a half hours away. He drags me to Brooklyn to give me cream cheese and bagels. <laughs> I have to get up at four in the morning to get the first train to get there. It's a tough deal. Going from paper to digital <coughs> was, was, was tough, really tough, because I'm embedded with this paper mentality. It's not real unless it's in paper. I have to touch it. Digital presented the challenge of document organization, number one. How are you going to find it? How are you going to name it? So I think in terms of other people doing this for me who don't have a securities license, who don't have insurance license, don't, do not understand what FINRA is and what the requirements are. So I tried to establish everything with the two, two mentalities, no-brainer and KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Okay, and that's why I designed, how I designed the, the templates that I have. What you saw was obviously pre-Laserfish. I didn't want to deal with that ever again. So I, I figured out that you need to put a, mon a number of things in place that you don't necessarily find in any uh, tech pubs. Sort of learn it from the beginning. Now, I've already told you a little bit about um, me. We're a full services firm, and 
not your father's Oldsmobile? Well, more than half our revenue comes from hourly fees we charge for ideas we have for people. The rest we get from asset management and things like that. Uh, one of the greatest challenges I had was to deal with a client who was uninsurable, cancer, he had a death sentence on him, and I found a way to get him a what would amount to a million dollars worth of life insurance, no premium, no physical, and it's, it's paying off right now. The family is now getting $2,300 a month income. You can read about that on my website, just look for the story called Protecting the Vulnerable. I didn't write the story, I had nothing to do with it. The people at Horse's Mouth wrote the story. They interviewed me, asked a few questions, and went from there. So the first question is, do you have a business plan of any kind? Is it in writing? Who else knows about it besides you? The short time here today, I looked at some business processes I have and say, gee, I need to reinvent that because what I thought would work, this actually is a superior way of doing it. I don't think laser fish arrived until almost six or seven months after the flood because of the problems you have with insurance carriers getting things done. I had a pod, that's what they call it, I guess, on my front lawn for, for months, loaded with the stuff I had excavated from the house. Part of the problem was when the flood occurred, the first call was then a homeowner's insurance company. And they sent people out, three people came out with these big, thick, black trash bags, and they just took everything that was downstairs and threw it in a bag and took it out. Then they took the filing cabinets out. They essentially stripped the office downstairs. It took them about three days to do that. Um, the bags were piled high in a garage. I've got a double car garage, and you one could not see over the bags. And the problem I, have, I had, of course, was deciding what to throw, what to keep. That is not something that I could delegate, because who else would know that I can get this material from Franklin Funds or American Funds or DFA or whomever. But these other documents, uh, I could not. So it took me close to two months to sort through all that stuff. And I have to tell you, folks, that is not fun, because in two months, wet stuff, wet paper stuff gets um, smelly and granny and messy. And, of course, it's all stuck together. If you ever had a glass of iced tea spill on a book, two pages on a book, it's impossible to separate those two pages. We all know that. However, I discovered a process that historical places use to dry out documents. It's called raising them, sort of like Folgers, right? They do a technique like that. They freeze dry it, and for a little over $6,000, they were glad to freeze dry all my documents. When they came back, however, I faced the next challenge was what do I do with them now because they're all dog-eared, they're all wrinkled. Uh, my first thought was, hey, run them through the copier and get something you can actually use. But that was not a possibility because of the dog-eared stuff. So I hired a few people from a local temp agency. I bought some the blue nitrile gloves, the kind your dentist uses when he works on your mouth, and the N95 mask that OSHA says you have when you're working with mold stuff. And uh, we spent one day trying to see how far we could get doing it. And I kept records and payroll stuff. It was like a, a time in motion study, if you will, because I needed that for the next leg and that was to deal with Zurich, American Insurance Company, who was the BOP uh, holder. And I explained to them that it took too many hours to do this, it would be horrendous if we had to do everything manually and put it back in, hanging file folders, blah, 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 blah. In the meantime, I'm holding conversations with Zaire. How do I do this? What does it cost? What does it look like? So I'm working 
two sides at the same time, and they agree that it was far better to do what I wanted to do for the simple reason that they would never have a claim for a flood again for lost documents. So that worked very well. I was very happy with that outcome. Today, we do things a little bit differently. Everything new that comes into the office, date stamp both sides, and scanned into something. Then we place it in a box. I actually have six boxes. One side has six yellow stickers. The other has six green stickers. The yellow sticker says January 1st, 2016, January 31st, 2016, Destroy April 30, 2016. And then February, and then March, etc. Now, on the reverse side, we have July through December. The records retention requirement we have is 90 days, but sometimes we don't always get everything done within that specified period, or we don't have time to get it done, so I went a little further. But after 90 days, we're shredding it, baby. We ain't keeping it which is what you want to do. In case there's a screw-up somewhere, someplace, that's the only reason we hold the documents. Besides, while I'm at RIA, I also have an affiliation with a broker-dealer, and their document retention rules prevail. Whether they got them from FINRA or SEC is irrelevant at this point. That's what I needed to do. Now, I use templates. Um, it was, I type so poorly, I really didn't have a choice. All right? I can only type with two fingers. When I went to high school, boys didn't take typing. Just that simple. And if I'm on the phone, I've got one finger with which to type. So we, we had to go to a system that worked better. So I wanted to idiot-proof the filing of documents. So I learned about this thing called metadata. It sounded to me like a fishing lure when, when Zier first talked to me about it. Anyway, I created lots of fields, and I created things topographically. So all one had to do was click the down arrow, and it would populate. And anyone not even remotely familiar with insurance, securities, et cetera, would be able to do the scanning and the filing. Now, uh, I didn't have a scanner at the time. At least uh, I did. It, 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 I bought it from HP. They said it would do 20 pages a minute. I was thrilled with that, except they were talking 150 DPI. I was looking at 300 to 600. So that was not acceptable to use for a project of this magnitude. So again, I went back to the insurance carrier and said, look, you know, you want to do this speed or I've got this handy dandy little machine here from Kia Ceramita and gosh, it's, it scans at 35 pages at 300 DPI, and it's only a mere 12.6. And uh, they agreed, because it made economic sense to them as well as me. Now, I'm going to show you one of the templates that I've used. Uh, we have one client that is in real estate. He's also a securities client and a tax client and a bookkeeping client, things like that. I, I advertise full services firm, and I man it. Anyway, he's a landlord in the city of Camden, New Jersey, and a great deal of his housing is Section 8 subsidized housing of some kind, whether it's from the city of Camden, the county of, of Camden, or the uh, local uh, Catholic charities. So we developed this to keep track of everything for him and, and me as well. So when we do one scan a week of everything he has, one operation. So I created an identification sheet and separator sheets. So the, the first sheet, of course, what every landlord wants to know about is rent checks. Now, we pick up the rent checks, too, because he now lives in Florida. His clients are in Camden. And he didn't think it would be a very good idea to let his clients know that he was 1,000 miles away from where they are. He thought it might have something to do with their propensity to pay rent on time. And he didn't want to find out, and I don't blame him. Anyway, so that's the first one. So we took all the subtopics that he has, 
and we created a cover page like this. When we do all the mail for the entire week, it just takes a couple of seconds to identify what's what in a pile, and when we're done, we'll, we will then scan it as a batch, one big thing, but we use the templates that you see over here. So when, uh, this is kind of over here. Between, between batches, we have a separator sheet that we created. So we'll right click on here, choose split document, and the rent checks will magically go into laser fish. Then we delete this document, and then we go to the next one. Why isn't this moving along? Because it's not live, that's why. <laughs> what? All right, so you can't see the other ones, but let's see if we can get other slides, see what we can capture from there. <coughs> okay, here's the the actual rent check. We actually copy the envelopes, et cetera. Why? Because if you're late with the rent, there's usually a 5% late fee for paying rent. If the landlord can't see that, he can't charge it. And when we've gone through all of these, this is what he sees. His bank deposits, Pal Peters is a rental agency that he uses in addition to his own. Her check number and the amount of the check that the net rent check that uh, he received uh, and the periods involved are shown there as well. In this particular month, we show the bank deposit separate from the rent checks. The rent checks are always accompanied by whatever deductions the rental agent might have made. Uh, the bookkeeper I have that handles this is in North Carolina. My client is in Florida and we're in New Jersey. So by leveraging technology, we're able to get things done in a way that as if he just walked into the office. His dad still lives in New Jersey, so I do get to see him at Christmas. And his uh, daughter lives in New York, so when he goes to New York, he'll stop by and say hello. But beyond that, our entire relationship is conducted electronically. I don't think you can see the right-hand side of the screen. Let me see if you can. Yes, there you go. Now, these are the various templates that I created and what the fields look like that are inside of them. Now, for investment people, we're going to look at the far right. So we, we have a doc account type, 401K, you know, the usual, same stuff you guys have, gals have, no difference here. And here are the, the template is called account type, investments, this template's investments, this one's correspondence. Correspondence we've set up kind of different because the BD wants to see all incoming letters, correspondence of any kind, as well as the outgoing on a monthly basis. You all know that. You've got the same requirement. However, LaserFish allows us to segregate these. There's a field in here, I don't know if we can see it on the screen or not, that we segregate some as inbound or outbound, and whether it's securities or non-securities or personal. So when I, at the end of the month, when I have to give this information, I do three clicks. I pull up the correspondence template, I put in a date range, and I check incoming or outcoming. 30 seconds later, I've got a PDF, and that's off to my OSJ. The same thing with the uh, outbound correspondence. Now, if you compare that to what we did before, wow, we had to keep a separate folder. I remember the first time I had an audit. The auditor flew in from Denver along with my OSJ. and said, well, give us the records from Maria Kennedy. No, give us all of your records for inbound correspondence. I said, which client? My largest client's Maria Kennedy. You want to see hers? Well, no, we want to see all your records. I said, well, why don't you just pick a client because I file by client like most people do. They weren't happy with that, so I got a little um, reprimand because I couldn't produce the stuff on the spot. But if you tell me who you want, I can pull the folder and get it for you because all my correspondence 
in a pen, in a middle of photo in a pentaflex by year. It wasn't that it didn't have it. It just didn't have it the way that they wanted it. If you've dealt with a regulator, you understand it's yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And <laughs> it's that or get your checkbook, take your pick, okay? And if the regulator doesn't answer the checkbook, you broke a deal of will. So I learned then to segregate that stuff. Now, that's handy. So I initially... I kept it in the middle. Of, I kept it in a folder. The folder might have been an inch thick at the end here, two inches thick. Who knows? But I had to retain it. It's something that's in the way. Outbound the same. I have a lot of outbound correspondence. It was a nightmare. Something I didn't want to deal with. And and the process that I used was so cumbersome. I would print. I would have a letter dictated. I'd have it printed. I'd sign it. I make a copy. I put one copy in this in outbound folder. I mail the other one to the client. When I got to LaserFish, the ear says, why are you doing that? And I said, well, that's the way I've always done it. <laughs> Have any of you done that? This is the way we've always done it? You never think of changing it? It's called zero-based budgeting. You start from the ground up and say, forget what process we're using. What's the most efficacious way to accomplish the end, end result? So Zier's comment was, we don't have to have a folder inside of LaserFish that says outbound or inbound. Uh, why don't you just use a template? I said, huh? Yeah, yeah. You, he says, first, you get electronic stationery. Well, how do I do that? We have paper. Yeah, I have paper. Well, send me the paper stationery. Send it to Patrick Leon. Okay, I did that. But what about, you? don't worry about the electronic. Just give me three samples of your signature and email that to me and shut up and go away. I'll be back to you later. All right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and I said, but, but the second page of my stationery has my logo embedded. It's a picture of an arc. <laughs> it's really funny. A guy, a guy with two floods... <laughs> And his logo is Noah's Ark, right? <laughs> Talk about an irony. <clears throat> anyway, the result was, if you're comfortable keeping things in a client file, don't change what you're doing was the year's advice. And my thing was, well, well, how do I get it? He says, create a field inside your correspondence template which has outbound and inbound. So when you store this data in the client file folder, it'll be appropriately labeled, and then we can show you how to use the search function in LaserFish and pull it out. I couldn't believe it was so simple. Unbelievably simple. And the mere, I, I hate to say this, close your ears, the ear. The mere pittance that Zier charged me to do that, to do the letter thing, was less than the cost of getting the stationery reprinted. <laughs> now, in the, in the broker-dealer world, uh, firms get acquired, names get changed, phone numbers get changed, things like that, and that's usually another trip to two people. Uh, the first is the compliance people at the broker-dealer, the second is the printer. So what Zier showed me how to do completely took the printer out of the picture. I've saved a bunch of money by never having to use a printer for that. I spent my money on these PSAs because I thought that would generate more goodwill than anything else. And I just, I, on purpose, I didn't put the phone number on here. It was not an oversight. I didn't want to appear obstreperous. I thought, if you're interested in what I have, interested in me, Everybody knows how to Google a name and locate me. That's where that business is for securities, non-securities, et cetera. And from that, I started building template after template after template uh, to do things. So much of what I do is one of a kind. It's not repetitive. I would love to use quick fields. I've been in two of those seminars in the last two days. But uh, um, I'm not the local gendarme with 
a hundred tickets that have to be processed, all of which have numbers and barcodes in the lower right or left hand corner. You know, one day I'm dealing with Transamerica, the next day I'm dealing with Genworth, the next day I'm dealing with American Funds or T. Rowe Price or DFA or Loring Ward or Ocean Park. They all have their own forms. If there's anything consistent, is that there is no consistency. Hence, my intense reliance on the templates. Now, this is a screenshot of Web Access 9.2. I know they talked about 10 today, but this was done back in October 9.2. And it shows you how easy it is to add another name to an existing field. This field was called assets, assets slash security slash whatever. Uh, so whether it's AIG or AARP, I've got all of that here. It's click the down arrow when you actually get into the program, but this is how the information gets there. The administrator function is segregated from the operating function and by design because I didn't want a neophyte going in there, erasing what's there, or, quote, making it better, okay? I reserve the right to be the administrator and I'll let the employees do what they need to do. I have two part-time people. Um, one is a bookkeeper. She works three days a week. The other is an IT individual. He works two days a week because generally the things he needs to do, he needs access to our three PCs. Uh, we don't have a server. It, it died. And that's really how I got onto LaserFish Cloud. It was December of 2014. My server was running extremely slow. I knew that Bill Gates was going to yank support for Small Business Server 2003 edition. I priced what a new one would cost, and then, of course, you're looking at 2008, but they didn't want to sell 2008. They wanted to sell... 2010 or, or 2012 and roll it back to 2008 or something like that. A rather major expense, so Zier and I had talked a year and a half earlier about this cloud thing, and it was a discussion. Nothing meaningful came out of it, but I said, hey, where are we on this? Can I jump into this? And he gives me a ballpark price of what he thinks it's going to cost to do this. And like that commercial on TV for the, the lady with the AARP, Sign me up. <laughs> I can't. We're not ready. When we, I'll be ready in two weeks, three weeks. That's what the home office tells me. Fine. But my server is dying. It's only four gigs. And it just can't handle what I'm trying to get it to do. Recognizing that Zier would, would handle the transition to LaserFish... I made what I thought was a deft move. I said, hey, Zaire, why don't you back up my server? Now, I already have it backed up with another company who does it slightly differently than Mosey does. Zaire was using Mosey at the time. But I recognize if there's going to be any uploading down the road, if it came from Zaire's server, I knew, I knew it would be fine his backup system. And I left for a business trip after that. Well, when I came back from the trip, he was unable to download the stuff into his computer because my server kept crashing on him. So we, we fixed that. We made sure he had everything up there was validated. And at that point, the server did a dump. 
And I said, I have a week to make the decisions here. Am I on the cloud or not? Otherwise, I've got to buy another server. I can only do one. I can't do both. So don't come back to me with a great deal later because I can't swing it financially. It won't work. He says, well, hold on a second. I got an idea for you. And he thinks outside the box. I'll give him that. He says, since we have your information up here, we'll put it on our virtual server. So how does that help me? He says, well, all you have to do is go to your your lap, laptop, your desktop works. Your lap, yeah, they work fine. Well, log into this website. Here's user ID and password, and you have you have access to all of your information, and you can scan stuff to it. Well, there was a small learning curve with that, but not a lot. And I paid him a modest fee to store the data on on his stuff, which I was grateful to do. I also kept the first server guy stuff completely backed up and saved because until I knew where I was, I wasn't going to let anything go. I'm kind of like a belts and suspenders kind of guy, all right? So around April or so, he says, we finally have a document, sign it, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I'll sign your docs. I have one request. I'm going to be the first guy because I've been waiting for the sucker for a long time. <laughs> and he obliged me with that. And I was. And I said, by the way, what version am I getting? He says, well, I'll be truthful with you. You're getting the pre-beta version. Actually, he said beta version. All right. And I said, oh, I've heard of beta versions. Before. No big deal. Well, I expect to get a bill, my charge account to be, my credit card to be hit the next month for the fees for the uh, laser fish. It wasn't. And it wasn't the next month, and it wasn't the next month either. And the reason is, I kept sending stuff out to Jared Cheatham here in Los Angeles saying, this isn't working, how do I make this work? There's a broken link here, blah, 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 blah. So I, I, I guess at the, th the second month I said, Z, are you sure this is a beta version? He says, well, I fib just a little bit. It's really a pre-beta version. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> what he just said, if he can't hear him in the background, he said he represents that. <laughs> so it wasn't until August, I guess, that I was full-blown into uh, LaserFish um, on the cloud. I opted for the um, desktop version because that is something with which I am comfortable, and staff is comfortable. After all, we started with 2007, went to version 8, and then went to version 9.2. Everything wasn't perfect, but it worked, and we had workarounds. But more important, we had a VAR. It was sensitive what we were doing. I received unbelievably good service from Sierra Singh, whom I think is his main IT person. I tried to focus everything with one person because it's all new, thinking I'm not the only person that's going to have this experience. One person needs to have this in their, their brain so they can help other people. And, that, and that's been a very good relationship. Now, moving down the road, I've got all the stuff working in the cloud, which gives me access to lots of other things. So what I've been able to do with LaserFish with, with clients is to take documents and use the redaction features to send things to clients where you normally can't send things to clients. For example, in the last meeting I discussed, they were discussing signatures on documents. And I said, well, if you've got a trust account with two different people, not related, you really can't show either one of them the SOCH or birthday number or occupation of the other person because that's personally identifiable information. It certainly isn't public information. With LaserFish, <laughs> not to worry, <laughs> You can redact that stuff, send it out, have client one sign it, bring it back, put it back in again, redact the other guy's stuff, and send it out. That's something you couldn't do in a manual process. And they can email it back because we have a secure email system. So I save a lot of money on FedEx, UPS, and the post office is speed. So 
I don't think that their savings that I thought about calculating, because if you don't know about redaction, if you don't know about, you can go into something, you can click uh, annotations, to click text box, and put a field in, because the form that you have wasn't generated properly to start with, like it doesn't have a co-trustee. I can't imagine why Pershing would have a form that didn't have a, a, a co-trustee, but it didn't. I can't fight Pershing, so I just... I borrowed from Clint Eastwood, who doesn't live too far from here, in his 1973 movie, Heartbreak Ridge. His famous quote was, achieve, adapt, overcome. And that's the strategy. It works. You don't get upset about it. Just move right along. Now, business overhead policy. Uh, you're not, unless you have a casualty insurance license, I suggest you have your business overhead policy reviewed by someone that's had claim experience for floods and things like that. Now, I, I might add something else here. I don't know if this is being recorded or not. We'll just take our chances. But first slide said about being independent. My broker dealer doesn't use Laserfish. They use some other product. They would like me to use their product. Possessions, nine tenths of the law. My documents, my repository. If for some reason we would have a falling out, you just cut me off. I could get in six months, seven months, eight months later. But what kind of a business plan is that is where you're, you're locked out of your information for six or eight months? Not a very good one. With the mergers going on in the securities industry today, it's not an unimportant consideration. So that would be a reason to do laser fish if nothing else was involved. Now, do I jump broker-dealers? No. The one I'm with, I joined in 1994. It's changed hand three times. It's about to change hands again. What they do doesn't affect me, and as long as it doesn't affect me, I'm a happy camper. They do the things I need to have done. I'm satisfied with that. I stay within their compliance requirements. They're happy with that, and, and we move on. But the business overhead policy is an important thing. What I hadn't considered in the business overhead, let's go back to the first flood because that's what this is about. The first flood put me out of business literally for five months. I couldn't access anything. I hired myself out to an employee benefit specialist firm for five months. They only paid me a grand a week. But, hey, that plus the income coming in from asset management was helpful. It kept my head above water. But I would have added something like that. The other things you need to look at are the, are the limits on your policy for these specific things that I have. Equipment replacement as well. Now, equipment replacement, everybody thinks that's pretty easy to figure out for yourself. But the, the document stuff is not. You need to talk to somebody that's got experience with that to protect your assets. So I highly recommend you do that. Now, Gen X and Gen Y, I engage as many children as I can, I develop a document to counter my privacy policy. The shorthand of my privacy policy says, and you'll excuse the grammar, we don't tell nobody nothing <laughs> unless they got a subpoena, and then we'll think about it. So financial people such as we, I am told, will lose 70% of our clientele when Papa Bear dies because Mama Bear will take it someplace else. Or it could be the other way around. Depends upon who wore the financial pants in the household. So my thought is let's build, let's build a relationship with the children a decade before anything happens. Let's give the children copies of the agenda for our quarterly, semi-annual, or annual meetings, depending upon whether we have an A, B, or C client. Let's send those children copies of the minutes. 
if you've ever had to explain to an heir why parents own X, and they have their they have their research from the motley fool, and of course they're not wrong, right? <laughs> it's a lot different conversation when you involve them in something that's going on. In order to do that, I've created a checklist of things that I can share with offspring. I have six different things in it. Tax returns, health issues, estate planning issues, a whole bunch of things. If, if you want that thing sent to you, drop me a business card and say, privacy release letter, and I'll email it to you. All right? Anyway, uh, they can choose which thing I can share, which thing I cannot share. Then I have a list of potential viewers. Then I have four children. Four actually work. Five has an entitlement mentality. <laughs> they don't want that kid to know anything about what they have. So that name is X'd out. And they have to physically initial yes or no, not an X in the box. I want to see the letters. Then on top of that, I require the document to be notarized by a third-party notary. Why? Because if I'm there when they do it, I could be exerting influence on them. If the ear's there and he's one of the heirs, he could be exerting influence on them. If they have to take it to the bank and nobody's there except the lady at the bank or the leaked real estate office, then I'm pretty sure that it's voluntary and they mean what they say. If I, if I had to face a regulator, I think it's a pretty strong argument, or a lawsuit, <laughs> a pretty strong argument as to the independence that the client exhibited in making that kind of a determination as to what could be shared. I'm not interested in getting caught up in a HIPAA violation or an identity theft violation. But you probably figured that out already when you saw these cards. So by involving the younger generation in these issues, it helps move the conversation along because at some point, the power of attorney that the parents have kicks in. And now I have to deal with the children about, I recommend this, what do you think? Now, I have a lot of tools with which I use to reach the children. Skype is the number one tool. Why? I'm old school. I want to do business belly to belly. I want to see you. I want to shake your hand. I want to look in your eyes. I can tell more from that than anything else. I have one client in Florida, and I told his wife, we're going to go to Skype. And she's really, how come? I said, well, I said, sometimes I talk about a complex topic, and I talk uh, like an Uzi, and <laughs> I want to be sure <laughs> when I lose you. So when your eyes start to glaze over, I know I need to back up. <laughs> and she said, you notice my eyes glaze over. And I said, occasionally that happens. But that's it. Why would you not want to do that? I mean, this technology stuff is great. But quite frankly, texting is not how to live. People, we're in a people world. The last seminar I went to talked about human involvement leveraged with technology. We need to get the emphasis on the correct syllable. We're the movers and the shakers. The technology is, leverages us the ability to do that on the scale that we couldn't do otherwise. The second flood, <coughs> I didn't turn into my homeowner's insurance company. Pretty obvious reason. I didn't want to get canceled. <laughs> it was too short between floods. That took about eight months to fix. There's still some things I need to, to work with because it led to a remodeling of the office completely. Everything from floor to ceiling, lights, everything. So we're now replacing fluorescent bulbs with diodes for a combination of less RF, primarily. The energy savings is negligible, but I don't like the RF. RF's not a good thing. I didn't lose any time talking to clients because any laptop I had, any computer available to me, I'd get the laser fish. Phone call comes in. Yes, Mrs. Kenny, I can take it right away. And while you're on the phone, let me give you the answer to your question. The only reason I had to get out of my chair was to fill my coffee cup. Not to go to a gosh darn filing cabinet or go to a banker's box with white, white fingernails and separate the folders to try to find something that was misfiled. Doesn't happen with laser fish if you set it up ahead of time. 
I can't begin to tell you the difference that makes. Now, one more little ditty that will explain a couple things to you. Remember I told you to have my data backed up by a company? Well, what I didn't tell you was that they weren't backing up SQL files. I didn't know what an SQL file was. They said SQL. SQL to what? Pre I know prequel, Star Wars, SQL. What is that? <laughs> I mean, I'm naive. It's 2000. I have no idea of what it is. It, you know, Zaire, he's got a degree in computer engineering. Wow. He's a very knowledgeable young man. And he just assumed that because I could talk as fast as he could, he's a New Yorker, nobody can beat him, uh, that I understood, but I didn't. So another valued vendor said, we've discovered that someone that had Laserfish lost all of their files. They believed they were back up, but the system they used did not back up SQL files. Here's a company to whom you can go, and they back up SQL files, and I did. I was very happy with them. A little unconventional way they did it, but the price was right. I still kept the other company. How much time have we got left? Let me near the end here. Yeah, we got nine minutes. Well, anyway, uh, I still kept the other company. The other company is Carbonite. Just a quick little thing for them that may help you. I found out that not every employee puts everything in Laserfish, regardless of the fact they're supposed to do that. So all of my PCs are dual hard drive, either 300 or 500 gig. And I encourage them to work on drive Delta for the data that they're saving, files they're saving, and drive Charlie for uh, programs themselves. So what Carbonite does is it backs up the files uh, for me on a real-time basis. If the file folder is green, it's backed up. If it's orange, it's not backed up. If it's neither dot, you've not selected it to back up. The second thing they've done is that they offer to image your drive C. Now, I'm a guy that does time in motion studies. I was a management major in college initially, okay? And they talked about the time in motion studies done in the 1900s in terms of how long it took. A guy named Smith, I think, that figured out how long it takes to do things, which is the genesis for Henry Ford's empire. Anyway, I discovered that it's 30, 30 to 40 hours for us to restore a PC because, you know, it's 45 minutes just to download the thing from Dell Computer with the... Uh, all the updates to Windows 7. And then you start with Microsoft. Net 1, Net 2, Net 3, Net 4, all those things that Microsoft has. You know, you download 50 things, it begets 128 things. I think the largest download we have is 945 megabytes was the download from Microsoft. So recognize it takes 35 to 40 hours to reformat Drive C. Carbonite said, hey, we'll make an image of your drive C. We'll do it every night. For every 24 hours, we'll do it. No extra charge. I pay $54 per computer. I get both. The only thing I needed was a way to store the image. That they wouldn't do on the web. They said, we could, but it's faster if you have it on site because when you start, if you've ever downloaded a thing from a web, like a backup folder, it takes a while to do it. So we went out to Phantom Drives and bought uh, three Phantom Drives, each for two terabytes, and they work great. We've had a computer die. We've reformatted. We put on Sophos encryption. It corrupted it. We went back to Carbonite, took the image thing, put it in 5 o'clock the night. The next morning, IT guy comes in and is ready to go. We then go to Bcrypt. Bcrypt gives us an encryption so it goes to error 33. They couldn't tell us why. They knew what happened before, but didn't have an answer. Guess what? Reformat again. Well, back to our little backup, and we're in business again. So it's well worth it to spend the extra money to get that IT uh, stuff. Now, a few minutes left. Any questions you want to? Throw my way.
then I'll give you one other tip, and that is you need a VAR. I don't care what your operation looks like, you need a VAR. You cannot negotiate this on your own because you don't know what you don't know. And I'm a shining example of that, okay? Um, I happen to have a very really good one, and I hope you'll be able to find a very good one if you're out of this area. I assume they got this thing territorialized throughout the United States. Now, one last thing. It's not going on, Len, Maria. I wonder what it, where's the sound thing down here? Turn it off. How do we get the sound? This, this one. Get the sound. Go ahead. Push it up. Good, good, good. That should do it. Thank you.